Hi, and welcome to Living in El Paso, Texas. My name is John Pena, and in this episode, we are going to talk about the future of El Paso. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is John Pena. I'm a real estate agent in El Paso, Texas with EXP. And this YouTube channel is all about El Paso. Eat, sleep, work, play. If that's what the kind of information that you're looking for, by all means, please consider subscribing. Click that notification bell to be notified when new videos come out. And in this episode, we are talking about a study that came out of UTEP, the University of Texas, uh, El Paso. My lovely wife brought this to my attention. Uh, so grateful to her for that. And it's pretty awesome because essentially, UTEP released what they're calling the UTEP Border Region Modeling Project. And what this is, it's a a business report on the border plex and the border plex is essentially uh, what we call kind of El Paso Juarez that kind of uh, business region it includes you know United States and Mexico we're gonna focus more on the El Paso side but uh, if you hear people saying border plex they're essentially talking about um, that kind of region that includes El Paso United States Juarez Mexico so this is a business report of the long-term economic trends for the next 30 years. So essentially, it kind of looks at 2019 all the way projecting 30 years into the future, 2049. Um, it's a very comprehensive plan uh, done with a ton of smarter people than me at the university there. And so what I wanted to do was kind of share with you some of the major ahas that they came up with. I'm gonna put a link uh, to the actual report in the description. So if you really wanna dig into it and check it out, you can do that for yourself. And otherwise, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so the first point I wanted to talk about was kind of demographics and population. So in 2019, our population here in El Paso was about 843,000. In 2049, they're projecting us to eclipse 1 million and be up to 1,092,000. So obviously, in my humble opinion, when the population is growing and increasing, that certainly signs that um, you know the city itself is growing. And some other things to kind of back up that idea, in 2019, it was estimated that there were about 283,000 households, okay, families living under one house. In 2049, it looks like that number is expected to climb to about 348,000. So, in the report, it also says that due to higher incomes, the city's going to be able to sustain and be able to manage more households because the incomes, the jobs, etc., will be there. We're going to talk about jobs. One other interesting note is that they said due to growth in especially like the information technology sector that the enrollment in colleges in the county is expected to climb as well. So that seemed like a pretty good sign as well. Okay, the next section is about employment. And a couple videos back, I kind of talked about the El Paso job market. And this um, really, I think, hopefully kind of solidifies some of those um, ideas and suggestions that I was putting out there. Please remember, I am not a fortune teller um, and I could absolutely be wrong, as could the very smart people who put out this study. So just a disclaimer there. But in 2019, there were just over 449,000 uh, jobs, total employment. In 2049, that number is expected to uh, go just above 591,000. And now this I thought was super interesting. They talked about a couple of the sectors that are expected to have losses and then some of the sectors that are essentially supposed to have gains. And so I wanted to share those with you. So payrolls are expected to fall in these three areas, manufacturing, retail, and federal military employment. And 
They talk about this, they say, manufacturing is becoming more capital intensive and automation, those darn robots, allows it to reduce payrolls while increasing total output. So that's why manufacturing, not just in El Paso, but you know, let's be honest, um, everywhere in the world is, is probably adjusting and, and trending down. Retail trade employment is also expected to decline as a consequence of e-commerce. Um, episodic health concerns, automation, right? And then federal military employment is also projected to decline due in part to advanced technology that eliminates many labor intensive tasks. So um, this could get uh, into a heated conversation again, like I said, about those robots and the computers kind of taking over and outsourcing some of those jobs. But um, like I said, uh, I'm just the messenger. All right, sectors in which the payroll is, increase, uh, is expected to increase, go up. Healthcare and social services. We talked about that last time that, um, you know, my uh, opinion was that healthcare is a pretty good um, gig here in El Paso as in other places. Um, other areas where it's expected to rise, hotel and food services. There's actually a whole section in here about the number of hotels, um, the number of rooms that are gonna be available, and they're higher and higher, suggesting that more people are gonna be traveling to El Paso um, for business, for pleasure. So um, it would be make sense that hotels are gonna do well as far as uh, increasing employment numbers. Other sectors that are expected to have an increase in employment, finance, insurance, real estate, transportation. Um, I was talking to a guy today and he just talked about Interstate I-10 as the Golden Highway, I think he called it. I'd never heard that before, but it does make sense because it is a, a pretty critical um, east-west uh, interstate uh, for the lower part of the country. Um, and then also expected to increase warehousing. That is very obvious uh, in the, the, one of the last videos where I actually showed that Amazon um, warehouse distribution center going up. So some pretty interesting uh, information as far as employment. Next category, personal income. And so now you have to keep in mind that over the next 30 years, um, inflation is gonna happen and so a dollar today is not gonna be the same thing as a dollar in 2049. Just like a dollar in 1950 was a lot more than it is now in 2020. So kind of keep that in mind here. So in 2019, the average personal income of somebody in El Paso was $31,000. Now, in 2049, that's projected to be $136,000. And again, now, um, $136,000 in 2049 is not what it would be right now. So keep that in mind, but I think the important point is to see that percentage change so that from 2019, 2024, there's a 4.4% increase and a almost 5% and then a 5.1, 5.1, 5%. So I don't exactly know how those numbers trend with the national average, but it does suggest that there will be a healthy amount of uh, income growth. And throughout the report, it talks uh, numerous times about this idea that, you know, more households will be able to be sustained in the city because of uh, personal income will increase with the times. So I think it does show this trend that, you know, as more and more business comes here, uh, whether that's commercial, whether it's, you know, the appreciation of real estate, that all of these different factors are showing strong, steady, continuous growth. So um, what they're saying essentially is that, uh, you know, the numbers are continuing to trend and we certainly hope that that's the case for all of America, but I think we're all realistic to understand that that's not exactly the case. Some cities are gonna fare well, some cities not so much, right? And so I believe what um, the big takeaway of this report is, is that 
the university essentially is saying, you know, things are looking good, the numbers are looking good for growth, whether it's uh, financial, whether it's business, whether it's population. So um, take that, those numbers with a grain of salt. But again, um, all of this projected growth does seem to bode well for our future. Okay, commercial activity. Commercial activity in 2019 uh, generated about 12 and a half billion in, uh, in revenue. In 2049, that number is expected to climb to 43.3 billion. So a pretty significant increase. And so one of the things I thought was pretty interesting, I'm gonna take right out of this thing, and it says, multi-billion dollar sales categories that year, 2049, should include food and beverage establishments, as well as general merchandise and warehouse stores. So what they're saying is, food and beverage is expected to, to do well, general merchandise, warehouse stores, so those things you know, should be doing multi-billion dollar um, sales. Growing demand for personal automobiles and commercial lorries, uh, lorries, 18-wheelers, semi-trucks, so, Growing demand for personal automobiles and semi-trucks translates into greater motor vehicle and parts plus gasoline sales that collectively top just under 12 billion in 2049. So if you're not from here, you may not be aware of that. There's a pretty strong um, connection between uh, America and Mexico uh, when it comes to automobile sales and especially automotive parts. So there are maquiladoras, which are factories in Mexico that are, you know, employing lots of um, Mexican citizens to create and build not only automobiles, but actually automobile parts. We, uh, there's a pretty strong transportation industry of, you know, at this point, semi-trucks, railroad even, uh, but semi-trucks going across the border and essentially bringing all of those cars, bringing all of those parts back into the States. So that generates uh, a lot of revenue, a lot of income for businesses. And El Paso Juarez, this borderplex region, is right there really in the thick of it. And so um, these projections seem to imply that, you know, that will continue to grow and um, be a pretty, pretty important factor in uh, commercial activity for our region. Okay, one, one more, uh, and this one is on residential uh, real estate. So we've been talking in the last video about the El Paso market. We had mentioned the average home price there. And so this kind of speaks a little bit to that, but more kind of um, in a broad, forward-looking way. So the third category in, third column, excuse me, is 2019. The last column is 2049. So let's look at median resale price. So this is the average price of a home that isn't brand new. So, you know, this home could have been built in 1970 or it could have been built in 2015. So the, in 2019, the average price of a resale home was around $150,000. In 2049, it's expected to uh, more than double and be around $360,000. So, quite honestly, I think that probably trends with you know general appreciation. And so, homes are going to cost more, but people are going to earn more, and that has been stated directly in the report. So, another interesting thing: average monthly payment on your mortgage. So in 2019, now this does not count property taxes, this does not count home insurance. This is just um, principal and interest. Your average monthly payment in 2019 was about $627. They're saying in 2049 that your average monthly payment uh, for a home not rent, for owning a home, um, paying a mortgage, would be over $1,500. And now, I wanted to read this because I thought uh, it was pretty interesting. So it says, housing price inflation drives monthly mortgage payments above the $1,500 mark by the end of the forecast, 2049. While that number seems daunting relative to what is tallied for last year, $627, 
This is the key. Affordability is projected to improve substantially as a consequence of income improvements, okay? Affordability is projected to improve st substantially as a consequence of income improvements. So what they're saying is, while yes, that looks like a pretty dramatic increase, that's going to be offset that there's going to be uh, that that's going to be a sustainable doable situation for most people because of income improvements. So like I said, you know, things are going to cost more in the future, but hopefully we're all also making more, right? So if a city is is doing well, is thriving, is growing, that's that's the goal. Things cost more, but people can afford more and can afford those things that cost more because they're making more money. So that is pretty much it. Uh, if you're really interested in this kind of stuff, uh, like I said, the links I'm gonna put in the description, it goes on to talk about the hotel activity, which I think has some implications for investors and entrepreneurs, business people, uh, suggests that more people will be coming here to El Paso uh, to visit, whether it's for business or pleasure, right? Um, has some implications for say short-term and long-term rentals if you're an investor. There's a section in here about air transportation, an interesting uh, section about water consumption, so there's a lot of really cool information in there if uh, if you consider numbers and data cool which some of you probably don't but some of you do and that was it we've got one more week in 2020 hopefully 2021 is gonna be a little kinder to all of us next week I'm gonna kind of showcase Christmas in El Paso and you know for me it used to be that christmas was all about kind of um snow and sleds and and bundling up and fires and all of that you know i was in wisconsin uh, for a number of years kansas city missouri chicago so now christmas in the desert is uh, a lot different uh, but we've got a lot of really cool things actually happening and so next week i'm going to showcase those if you're interested in learning more about El Paso, like I said, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time.